Thanks. Glad we got these back. Um, anybody get both? The meaning, the, the full meaning of both? Nobody? Anybody get one or the other? Yeah. And anybody get sort of little, little bits of both? Yeah. Anybody such as myself get n none of either? <laughs> that would be me. Sometimes the readers don't know what they're reading. Um, so interesting. Oh, by the way, apparently there are people who can understand everything that three people say at the same time. It, it's like there's something wrong with them that they can do that. But um, most, well, the vast majority of just human beings can't understand three, and in fact, we can't understand two. And there's no real reason why we would usually need to. Um, now, we, why do we do this exercise? It's not to say, gee, don't interrupt each other. You can't understand each other when you're both talking, because you already know that if you weren't raised by wolves. Um, and it's to make a, a slightly different point, though, which is even when there's only one person talking, you have access to two voices. So there really, in some ways, are two people talking. So right now, for example, you hear my voice, and I'm saying what I'm saying. And the second voice that you hear is your own internal voice, the little radio station that's playing in your head. Um, take a moment, actually, and I'll shut up. Find the internal voice in your own mind. Literally, try to listen to it. Tune in for a moment now. So you might be thinking, it might be saying, oh, this is kind of interesting, this internal voice thing. Might be wondering, you know, is it going to, I wonder if the rain is going to let up. You might be thinking, I don't know what Doug is talking about. I don't have an internal voice. <laughs> um, if you're thinking that, that's your internal voice, by the way. <laughs> so uh, you, found, you found it. So, now, that turns out to be an incredibly important piece of the puzzle of how we communicate. Because everything that we talk about and think about is mediated through your internal voice. Um, let me, whoops, yeah. So, uh, and, and often it's where the action is in a tough conversation. So this person is thinking something and they're saying very often, we're saying something else. And there's a gap often between what we're thinking and feeling on the one hand and what we're actually saying in the conversation. And you can't tell necessarily if a conversation has gone well just by reading a transcript or just based on what people say. If you're giving a performance review, for example, and the person says, yeah, great, thank you, that's really helpful, and what they're thinking is, you know, who are you to give me this feedback? This is ridiculous. You don't know anything about what I do. Well, that's not a very successful performance review. It's almost as if you need to know what they're going to say when they leave to their friends and people in the other offices, right? Um, so the internal voice sometimes is where the action is at. And in fact, you can in some ways measure how difficult a difficult conversation is by how big that gap is between what's being thought and what's being said. So an example, oh, and there, it, there's not just two voices in a tough conversation. There's really four voices because there are two, two people. Let me get these out of the way. Um, there's two people, so there's four voices, two external, two internal. So uh, this person's thinking, how's the project? And they're saying, how's it going? How's the project? That's a pretty small gap if we were going to measure this gap. This person says, fine, thanks. And they're thinking, <laughs> they're thinking, I hate you, for example. This is kind of a silly example. But you can imagine that that might happen. Um, this is a bigger gap. This is going to be a tough conversation for both of these people, not just this person, right? Now, why is it tougher when there's a bigger gap? Well. This person is, is going to have trouble engaging in this conversation well, and that's going to create problems for both of them. If, if communication is essentially talking and listening, giving information and taking information in, a big gap inhibits that, both of those processes. 